Okay, so I'm going to be talking today about Sir Isaac Newton. Um, I'm sure you all know how amazing he is, and so that's not exactly what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to try to convince you that this guy is a jerk, because <laughs> he is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but like, I mean, everyone knows he's crazy smart, right? But he's also just like this really interesting person, like he had this really interesting personal life. Um, so just feel free to stop me if you have any questions at any point in time during the presentation. Um, okay, so. Is this exactly how you started uh, your talk to explain yourself? No, I didn't okay. quite say it that way. Okay, so, early life. Um, just before we start, a little context about what's going on at the time. Um, the Massachusetts Bay Colony was established in 1629. Um, so, the English Civil War is going on in the 1640s, and Louis XIV is on the throne in France. And Galileo dies in 1642, which is, um, like a lot of people make a big deal of the fact that Newton was born the year Galileo died. Um, fun fact, is actually a fluke because um, the continental Europe had switched over to the Gregorian calendar system, but the England, uh, England hadn't yet. So technically, he was born in January of 1643, but they're just using different calendars. So, there we go. <laughs> so. Um, anyway, so his parents were Isaac and Hannah Newton, and they were lower rungs in, of the gentility um, agrarian farmers. Um, and so here's a picture of their house, just so you get, like, this is, you know, when I say, like, lower gentility, I actually mean, like, lower gentility. You know, he wasn't a peasant, but he wasn't too much higher. Um, so his father actually died a few months before he was born, and so his mother remarried to an older man named Barnabas Smith, and one of the stipulations of her marriage to him was that Isaac Newton goes to live with Grandma. So, yeah, so Newton obviously does not like his stepfather very much um, because he was, you know, he was forced to live with his grandparents until he was 10. Um, and so, you know, he was just denied, you know, that loving childhood. Um, the other effect, though, is that he was guaranteed enough, like, land to be independent when he came of age. Um, so his grandparents sent him to a nearby grammar school, um, and then from age 12 to 17, he went to an another school in the, a nearby town. And at this school, he met this guy named Humphrey Babington, Humphrey Babington, um, who was a fellow of Trinity College at Cambridge. And this guy is going to have a big effect on young Newton. Um, he really just, you know, encourages him and helps him out uh, at a kind of difficult part of his life. And he becomes a lifelong ally to young Newton. Um, so, oh, let's go back, whatever. Um, so, at grammar school, Newton's kind of a poor student, which, again, is a, a pattern he's going to establish for the rest of her li his life. And, but he um, does dis display an early scientific curiosity. Like, he loves messing around with, like, watches and sundials and just seeing how the mechanics of everything works. Um, and he was also uh, very, very much of a loner. He was fiercely protective of his work and very arrogant too, which again, you'll see this pattern throughout his life. Um, so after grammar school, his mom decides that Isaac Newton should come home and start managing the family farms, which uh, doesn't, go, doesn't go over very well. It has been actually uh, posed by scholars that Newton was intentionally bad, just because he was such, like he was so awful at this. Like he would like take books out to, him with the, to the fields and like, cows would be roaming everywhere, and it was just, it was so bad that um, his mother was convinced to let him go back to school. <laughs> so, yeah, so he goes back to school, um, and he enrolls in 1661 at Trinity College at Cambridge. And I think this might actually be a, a picture of Trinity College at Oxford, so ignore <laughs> that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so he enrolled in Cambridge, um, which was a pretty big deal back then. Like, not as big as it was now, um, but, I mean, still, it was a pretty big deal. Um, so while he's there, he is poor, which means he has to become a subsistar. What is a subsistar? That's basically just a servant. Um, as you can imagine, this really didn't do too well for him in the social scene. Um, but luckily, he was, um, he managed to get 
he's a servant for his friend Humphrey Babington. So the relationship was much more of friends than servant and master, which was good for him because it meant he could concentrate more on his work, which he did. Um, he pretty much ignored the Cambridge curriculum, which was still very heavily focused on the classics, you know, Latin and Greek, reading, you know, old texts and whatnot. Um, and Newton wasn't really interested, so he spent a lot of time studying light and optics, which is something he's going to return to later. But like, he did crazy stuff, like just sticking things in his eye to see what kind of colors he sees. Like, bad things that she should not do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, bad. Um, but he was a very, very, very devoted student to what he was interested in. Like, he would just, like, if he got interested in something, he would just go for days without like eating or sleeping, just totally focused on his work. And again, this is something that um, he, he, he does throughout his life. When he gets interested in something, he really gets interested in it. You know? um, so he was also very secretive about his work. Um, and kind of you know, wonder why. And I think there's a, there's a few factors. The first was that he wasn't exactly popular at school. Um, again, like he was a sub he, was a, he wasn't like, you know, a popular guy. Um, two, he was very arrogant, which again attributes to that not popular thing. Um, he was also, um, like I said before, he, um, he had a very lonely childhood, which, so he has, you know, kind of like the habit of being alone. Um, um, also, it was, it's, we're, um, no one's certain, but it has been close that he's homosexual, and which definitely wasn't acceptable back then. Um, another interesting thing is that he was um, an Aryan, spelled A-R-I-A-N which means uh, that he didn't believe in the Trinity. He believed that Jesus was made by God, not that Jesus was one with God. And this was bad. Um, like, he wouldn't have been burned at the stake for this if, you know, if it got out, but he, it, he definitely would have been denied any, like, good jobs anywhere. So he had to keep that in the down low. Like, especially, like, I mean, he went to Trinity College. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, he had to keep that secret. Um, so anyway, so he was all this kind of combined to make this very solitary person during um, his college years. So 1664, um, he was made a scholar, which basically means he was no longer a sub -Cesar. He was given financial support by the university. And in 1665, he gets his uh, Bachelor's of the Arts. 1665 is also important because of the play. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The play broke out in London, which meant that anyone who had the financial means left London as fast as their legs could carry them. And Newton was a part of these, um, this immigration from London. So he went home to Lincolnshire, and this is called his Annus Miraculous, his miraculous year, just because he did so much work, um, like just, you know, cogitatively wise. Um, like, technically, the, you know, the apple thing, which didn't actually happen. But if it had happened, it would have happened in 1665. Um, because this is when he started really thinking about um, the inverse square law, which he would become famous for with the Principia. Um, and he claims that he like sat down and wrote inverse square law on a sheet of paper. But we don't actually have documented evidence of this. Um, like We know that he thought about it a lot, but it's not so certain that he put it together. Um, so side note. Uh, this isn't related to Newton at all. But 1666, there was the plague, there was the Great Fire of London, and it was 1666, so six. So everyone thought it was the apocalypse. Which <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that too, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so while he was thinking about the inverse square law, he is also developing calculus. Um, now he didn't actually publish calculus, like his, you know, the whole thing until 1693, and this is going to lead to problems because of this guy Leibniz, who is cool. Um, so Leibniz independently discovers, or you know, develops.